Hey everybody, DM Scotty here. I've had a lot of people asking me about uh, a video showing how easy D6 works. And I thought it'd be fun to show you a game I ran with uh, with a group and uh, to introduce them to the game as well as to give you guys an idea how you might run easy D6. So I chose this really kind of weird scenario where these players are trapped in this game run by this uh, extra dimensional entity. And I thought that'd be a fun kind of off the wall adventure to show the strength of how easy D6 can work and convey these kind of things that are non-standard fantasy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so without further ado, let's hit our table and we'll show you uh, how the game went. Why don't we have everybody introduce their characters? So, Lisa, you go ahead and... All right. Um, I am Dr. Phoebe Krallmeister. I am human. Uh, my inclinations are alchemist. I don't know how that's pronounced. Kyrgyzian. Um, and uh, Kyrgyzian, yeah. Kyrgyzian and victory and fail in failure. Um, yeah. I have... I am a shapeshifter, and I was, I, 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 I'm an experimental doctor. I think that um, helping people in new and unique ways um, is, is good. However, I was drummed out of my practice because of some, what people thought were unethical practices. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, uh, if it works, I don't see what's wrong with it because if I turn into a certain animal and I'm using their venom and it helps people, I see no problem with that. But, well, you know, I guess some people just can't see the benefits of uh, experimental medicine. <laughs> of shape shifting medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to know about her? Uh, were, were those what was were those her aspects? Oh, her aspects. Um, I am a misunderstood genius. Ah, <laughs> aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Um, no. Oh, are we using mementos? Uh, sure. Yeah, we can use mementos. Okay. Um, she has a locket around her neck. That um, she keeps very that she hides within her shirt. Okay. Cool. All right. Who wants to go next? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, my character is called Arth Ann Rick, which you know you could probably guess where that name's come from. Uh, <laughs> He is a warden, a goblin, and he's uh, also, like, inclination-wise, he's a marksman and he's slippery. Nice, so nice. His speciality is kind of, uh, you know, sniping at a distance and such like. He's a bit of a loner because he's an outcast from his other goblins, and uh, he just sort of, like, uh, makes friends as he goes, but he's not really good at making friends. He's a bit of a loner. Cool, cool. Yeah, is there anything I've missed, like uh, like stat wise or anything? Nope, nope. Um, uh. So, oh yeah, okay. Uh, so, um, how about Sebastian? Okay. Uh, so I'm playing Sebastian Gustavus Vasile Alexander Bonaparte Saint Stephen the Third, uh, but most people call him. <laughs> But uh, most people call him uh, the bastard or uh, the defendant. <laughs> he's a human. He's a human rascal, uh, mostly a traveling conman. And his inclinations are dandy, sneaky, and danger sense. Nice, okay. nice. His aspects are aristocratic education and itchy feet. Basically, he's the uh, inconvenient bastard child of some noble who. Uh, Shuffled him off to uh, an orphanage at about uh, age 12 and uh, left him to uh, find his way on his own. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> Is that uh, Thaspian? 
Yes. Okay. Um, human gypsy, um, rascal, bonus uh, acrobatic task, um, lock picking, trap finding, and uh, the magarthy and aspects. Uh, because he's a gypsy, he has his um, the powder of all his ancestors' pieces of their bones that like he wears on a, a necklace under his clothing. Um, but because of that, uh, connection with his ancestors, they appear ra- at random times and will argue with him. Um, <laughs> so he could potentially look like he's talking to himself, but he's actually talking to them, but it actually helps him with his, uh, thieving skills by having them where he could send them, you know, to go, go, go look behind that door before I open it. Right. Um, right. And very because cool, of, very cool. Because of that, he has uncontrollable visions of the future that are debil- yeah. that are debilitating, like massive migraine type thing that comes and goes. Right, right. I could fix that. <laughs> <laughs> Venom, Venom to the jugular, right? <laughs> you'll twitch for a few days, but you'll you'll feel better. You'll feel yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just don't worry about that rash. It's no big deal. <laughs> All right, party. You awake. And you don't recognize this place. You're in a long stone corridor with many doors. And then, almost as if something came into your peripheral vision but you're looking right at it is this cloaked figure that you swear it's not making any noise as it steps on the stones. It's almost like it's just hovering over the stones, but the cloak is so long that you can't see the feet. So the dark cloaked figure kind of comes gliding up to you. And as you gaze at it in the, in the deep hood, you see the glint of eyes, the, some moisture in there, but you can't see a face. It's so dark under this hood that you can't see a face. And it says, Welcome to the Neverwhere. And it just kind of kind of waits for you to react. Who are you? I am the Grim. I am the caretaker of this place. You came here yourselves. You are in the land between dreams and reality. The place of possibilities. There are worse places to wake up in, I guess. I uh, get up off the floor and uh, duck myself. <laughs> so, so, what's up with this place? So, see these doors? These are possibilities. This place, you can choose your own possibility. Just walk through a door. Why am I be- why am I given possibilities when I had already made my own choices? I am just the caretaker. I don't have the answers you seek. The answers are behind one of these doors. Is there any strange orders like in the hallway? No. It it, it uh, actually it's it's strangely devoid of any sense except for the touch of your feet on the floor. Can we see? no smell, no sound. Can we see our bodies? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You're solid. You can touch yourself. The thing seems solid. The grim seems solid in front of you. Okay. Okay. uh, And the only sound is his voice and yours. No other, no other sound. Okay. Can we see each other? Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Do we know each other? Yeah, you look around and... 
I assume so. Oh, okay. So as I we'll just assume you've been you've been grouped you've been grouped. Yeah. Oh, that's a good that's a great question. Though. We'll just assume you've been grouped together, um, and been you know itinerants for a while or whatever. So yeah, you do know each other. It's not like you came from a random place and just appeared all together. Yeah. All right. So uh, as I check my uh, my pockets, I uh, look around the others. Uh, you all doing okay? Nothing missing. And I'm taking a look at the uh, doors. Are they like all identical? Is there anything to distinguish one door from the other? Great question. Uh, you're not missing anything. You have all your gear. Um, oh, we forgot to roll for gear, didn't we? Um, but uh, yeah, you're not missing any gear. Uh, and the doors are all identical. They're just uh, well-made wooden doors. How many doors are there? Uh, it seems to go off into infinity. Okay. Like it just, it just, the vanishing point just totally converges. I look at Arth and say, your thing, Arth. Go check a door. Go check a door. Fine. <laughs> my character moves to open one of the doors okay uh, the the silver handle um, can be turned and opened uh, you you usually have a sense about these things about danger uh, behind a door or something like that but you're just it's just kind of a blank. You're not reading anything about this door. Yeah, I can't get a read on this thing. So you don't... You don't have any feeling what's behind it. Yeah, so my character goes to open another door. Okay. Same kind of thing. It's just as easily openable. The The handle moves easily. It's not locked. Uh, but yeah, it's just a blank. It's like beyond this hall, it might as well be nothing. Mm. Okay. Uh, and your sense is really sharp, you know, it's like... I have danger sense, do I uh, feel anything when he opens any of the doors? Uh, he hasn't actually opened them yet, I don't think. Alright. Yeah, He's I go to kind of grind them. Is it a push or pull open door? It's a push open. Okay, I uh, grasp the handle tightly and then slowly push open the door. Okay. All right. As he does that, um, it's like a great vacuum has been opened and you're all stuck through the door immediately. Um, and then the door slams shut behind you. And just as quickly, the door vanishes. There's no door behind, no longer a door behind you, and you're in some kind of stone chamber. So before we go further, uh, let's go ahead and roll for everybody's gear, okay? Okay. Oh, I, I selected my gear. I didn't realize. Oh, did, everybody, did, everybody, did everybody select their gear? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, okay. Okay, then we have to worry about that. Awesome. Okay, so the door vanishes behind you, and... As you look around, you see a stone, like kind of a cavernous chamber, uh, about 30 feet wide. And on the floor of the chamber are a bunch of bodies, about a dozen bodies in awkward positions, like they've been mutated or, or mutilated or fallen from a great height. And as you kind of look, as you look up, you see you're in some kind of chute that oh. uh, has a red light at the very top of the chute. Oh well, Doctor. Any other bright ideas? <laughs> well, you could have chosen a different door, you know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> 
So it's it's pretty dark in here. There's just a barely any light with the red with the red light at the very top of the chute. Does anybody want to do anything? Okay. Uh, um. so we, are we like in a kind of well or something like that? So no uh, no other mm -hmm. exits in here. Right. Okay. I poke at one of the uh, walls with my stick. It's like, ish. We've been in. Uh, Weirder places. Does it look climbable or something? That's a good question. Um, it looked a bit um, treacherous, but um, does anybody have a torch or a lantern or anything? Yeah, I was going to light it my torch. So. Okay, okay, that definitely helped. So when you light the torch, you see a circular pathway winding up the well to the top. Uh, and but it looked treacherous, like it's rounded and and not very wide. So you'd have to walk single file up the path, and it's rounded on the edge. So it's not like it looks like you could be, very easily fall off. And I like just wide enough for our feet to sit sideways against it, and like Jimmy up. Is what you're that saying. would definitely help. Yeah, if you were like kind of against yeah. the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would definitely help. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have my uh, spirit companion. We'll, we'll call her. We'll call her Susan. Well, she looks like a woman right now. Um, uh -huh. We'll call her Susan, and I'll have her like go up to like go up to see if there's any spots that are potentially more dangerous than others, like missing gaps, like you know that type of thing. Okay. So as she goes up. Um she's kind of communicating with you that there are uh, caverns entrances at various level of the of the path so she's she's gone up and she's actually at the first it winds up a little bit and she's at the first door or entrance to some cavern okay. while that's happening the rest of you also notice that there are other entrances at the bottom here that seem to go up also that aren't the path aren't the direct path they look like there's some caverns that might cheese you know like a like swiss cheese like wind up okay uh, right. the, through this right. yeah looks like we've got plenty of options in front of us but how about before we go off and do anything else we uh we get to look in these bodies, eh? Uh, actually, I had questions about those. Uh, I had questions about the bodies, actually. Uh, uh -huh. Do they look like uh, they've been killed by the fall? Do, do, do they have any uh, wounds on them, bite marks, things like that? Uh, Doctor Phoebe, uh, you, um, you kind of—I imagine you kind of examine them. It looks like most of the injuries are from the fall. Uh. But uh, there are some wounds on some of them. Well, they've clearly uh, fall they've clearly died from falling from a great height. However, um, perhaps some of them did not die immediately and they ate each other. I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, Amazing yes. observation there, Doctor. I can see you like really earned that, that accreditation. <laughs> <laughs> With a few of them, it looks like something ripped at their armor or clothing. Oh. Well, oh dear, it looks like someone's already been through them. How are you going to examine the bodies? Poke it with a stick? <laughs> or no, yep. actually, turn, I'm, pick it I'm up, going, turn it over? I'm going to shift into a small snake. Okay. And I'm going to crawl into little, little openings, <laughs> whatever okay. openings okay. are available. <laughs> okay. Yeah, some of them are very old and almost skeleton, almost skeletal-like. Others are much more are more recent and just kind of like desiccated corpses. Um, none of them are fresh. But as you do, as you disturb the corpse like that, um, the thing. You, you know, first thing you notice is there's movement inside the corpse. And I'm in the corpse. <laughs> yes, yes. 
and it's riddled with these kind of black beetles. Um, and you guys, as you're watching this, see a bunch of them scurry out of the corpse and into the into the dark edges of the cavern, away from the snake. Can I capture one? Sure. Yeah, I guess that's breakfast sorted. <sighs> All right, um, I capture one and and revert back to my original form, and I am looking at it closely. Okay. What do I see? All right, uh, it's a squirming beetle trying to get away. You know the typical top-heavy, you know, leg squirming, wiggling beetle. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like a carrion beetle. Uh, okay. Um, Friend of your doctor. Which that means that there's probably a lot of carrion coming in here. <laughs> Hopefully you won't be next. To support um, a population of beetles that eat, you know, eat flesh. Um, all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I pocket the... Be I, I, I crush it and then okay. pocket the beetle. Okay. Uh, a a, a whitish ooze glumps out of it. That may not have been smart, Doc. Look, look at the pinchers on that and look at the wounds on the corpses. Yeah, you definitely don't think the beetles had anything to do with the wounds. Okay. Yeah, it was something big. Something at least human-sized attacked. <clears throat> was and it to me? Claude mauled it. Well, giant beetles wouldn't be the first time to see something crazy. So... And then... That's when you hear kind of a scraping noise like a metal scraping stone I don't like the sounds of this nope. and then you see two red lights close together like eyes and they suddenly appear in the darkness and you realize the reason when, the when you swing the torch around is because it is a large there's a large shield um, and something is coming up from behind the shield and it looks like a uh, desiccated head of a person and the eyes are glowing red and it says and it's it is it, you can barely see it behind the shield the shield is so it's like this bulwark shield is so huge that it says welcome to the game do what, sorry? My master welcomes you to the game. <laughs> Who's your master? Arbrix Ogrid. The one who watches. Nah, uh, doesn't ring a bell, sorry. <laughs> 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 the skeleton doesn't, or the corpse doesn't say anything. Does it smell? Does it smell? Uh, it smells in this cavern. You can't tell if it's coming from the corpse or just the general horrible smell that's in the cavern. Okay, my character would like to start scaling the walls um, just to get to an angle of elevation. Okay, so. Um, the walls are um, pretty slick, uh, not easy, but the path is easy to traverse to go up the spiral path. Do you want to stay on the path, or do you want to yeah. try to actually climb the wall? Stick to the path. Okay, yeah, you can easily you can easily climb that path. Um, do you want to get some elevation on this, right? Yeah, because okay. uh, use the marksman skill to its advantage. Yes, exactly, exactly. So. Yeah, the thing is, the, the corpse is standing there behind the, the bulwark shield. And then you see a uh, sword come out from behind the shield. Do any of the corpses that are on the ground look like the, they took sword wound? No. Okay. It all seems to be some kind of, like, clawed creature that did this.
Okay, I'd like to ready my weapons. Okay, cool. Anybody else? Um, I'm gonna follow with, uh, Athric up, um, you know, some... So, because you said it winds around like this, like where he's on one side this way and I'm on the other, so... He could use his bow and I could use a bow and we could, you know, shoot down at whatever. Gotcha. So, the, yeah, the path kind of winds up like a corkscrew. Okay. Basically, yeah. So you could pass him on the path and go further up. Okay. Yeah, and then, and then uh, get on the other side, but that would put you high. That would put you higher up. Okay. 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 I've got my uh, walking stick ready. Okay. Okay. So the skeleton or the corpse uh, comes trundling towards you, uh, dragging the enormous shield. So uh, who wants to go first? Well. Doc and Sebastian are down at the bottom, so we're up. So you guys can go first, I guess, because you guys yeah. are in, in direct combat. Yeah, what do you want to do, Dr. Phoebe? Um, I ask, what is this game? I don't, we, we should know the rules. We don't, we, how do we play? The first rule is survival, as it comes trundling towards you. Sword raised. Oh. And dragging the enormous shield. Uh, I turn into. You have moments uh, before it's on you. I turn into a hummingbird and shoot up straight up. Okay, okay. I'm since this is combat, uh, we're gonna roll. We're gonna do a magic check. So, basically, I will roll one d six for the resistance. Mm-hmm. And I, have to I got a one. People. Okay, so the great thing about a one is you automatically cast your spell. You don't have to roll any magic check. Yay! Right, right. So, yeah, since I rolled a one resistance, you can't not beat a one, so you automatically turn into a hummingbird and shoot up. Okay. And, um... Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh... Let's go, Sebastian. What do you want to do? Okay, I'm uh, moving, making my way around the uh, shield and uh, going to try to uh, kneecap the, uh, the thing. Nice, nice. So attack, uh, attack it, okay. and um, it's uh, die six, yeah. It just sorry, just a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you trained oh, in melee? No. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Are you trained in melee? Uh, no, I am not. Uh, but okay. So I, yeah, you would just roll one die, uh, unless you and you haven't taken fighter as an as inclination. No, no, so you no, would no, roll one die. So a one is a total miss. You can't use karma on it, but you do get a karma. So uh, I don't know if everybody started, but you would start with one hero die and and three karma. <laughs> so you guys can keep track of that. Um, now. Carl, you would get a, you would get another karma, or you could use your hero die to re-roll that one. Yeah, I think I'll uh, I think I'll go for that. I'll uh, okay. use the hero die. Okay. Wow, you're you only get one for for the whole session, you know. Yeah, don't worry. If I keep rolling badly, I'll uh, stack up enough karma to buy another one. <laughs> 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 okay, four. That is definitely better. Um, but unfortunately. The, the the corpse drags the shield into the way and blocks your attack. Um, so, do you want to uh, I'm going try to, to hit? You want to try to use karma and try to hit it, or do you want to no? I'll uh, uh, just let that pass. I'll burn two karma. Okay, two karma will give you a six. Yep, that still does not hit it. You have to get a confirmed crit to hit it. Because okay. it has this enormous shield. So, um, basically, you have to roll again and get a six. Whoa. <laughs> and okay, I you my, got a five. An, another point of karma to... Uh, and if you spend the karma, you will get it. Okay, all right, nice. So, um, you dodge the shield, uh, mash into it, and it's so brittle it just shatters apart. Um, although the arm 
comes flying towards you, still flailing with the sword, and it gets an attack on you. Oh, gosh. And it misses. So you dodge just at the last minute. The sword and the arm clatter to the ground. Uh, the skeleton shatters, bone shards flying everywhere. Uh, the head bounces off the side of the cavern, and the shield just boom, with an enormous clang um, and a crunch of another corpse hits the ground, hits the stony floor. Bloody hell, Sebastian. I didn't know you had it in you. <laughs> Congratulations. That was awesome. And that is the power of hero dice and karma. <laughs> right there. A great example. Okay. okay. So I spit right, out, so I spit out yeah, some, some uh, bone chips. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I was say those. <laughs> let's go look for the bugger who sent this guy in. <laughs> So, um, uh, Thaspian, yes. you, you're kind of far enough up that you're, you're basically at the first door, the first cavern door. Okay. Um, and as you, as you're standing there in the, in this, wah, 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 you know, the, the sound finally stopped reverberating, there's something up here with you. Not in the cavern behind you, the door, but it's it's up above, and you hear the flap of leathery wings um, above, not far above you. Okay. Um. Not me. I'm going to take a piece of my washcloth thing that I have hanging uh -huh. like the sash take a piece of that wrap around an arrow and light it with my torch and shoot it up into to see if it illuminate a little bit awesome that's nice that's nice okay um as you do you see these hunched figures just above on the path above take flight um and you can hear their their wings flapping now as they as they fly in this kind of it's about a thirty foot radius is what we're talking about, um, and they're hard to see because their skin is black, but it also seems oily and or rubbery and it reflects the light. So you just see these kind of flashes of large flying creatures in the torchlight as your arrow passes and they kind of fly out of range of it. There's something but now they're up kind of, here. But now they're kind of loose in the air. They're kind of fluttering around in the air. Uh, I, like there, you kicked the hornet's nest. There's something up here and um, I, I, I don't know what it is. Um, Does it look friendly? <laughs> I don't know if it'd be friendly or not. Because my mind would be on not friendly. <laughs> I'm gonna um, step into like that little bit of a doorway, which is look in there with the torch and see how far deep it goes. Like if there's okay. any other like holes in there, and if not, I'm gonna stick the torch in the ground so that it illuminates like that whole space where it would be easy to light arrows if I need to. Okay, okay. Um, as you poke the torch in to the space, it seems about 20 feet deep of a cavern. Um, you can see other caverns leading off of it. Uh, maybe that the cheese works you saw down earlier, some of the caverns connect with this one. Um, but you see something interesting. There are, on the sides of the cavern, are standing figures, humanoid figures. Um, they're hard to see in much detail in the torchlight, but they kind of twitch. Um, as you shine the torch in like they were sleeping or something, and now they're kind of activated or twitching or w woke up. 
and at the far end, you see um, a stone kind of jutting out of the wall. Um, and the stone has a symbol on it. You can't quite make it out from the distance, but there's some kind of symbol on the stone that juts out from the wall. You'd have to get closer to see it. Okay. Do these things, I mean, are they completely awake or do they look like they've, like, you know, were they woken up a little bit but are drifting back off to sleep? Or, like, what's the, the state of what I'm looking at? They're kind of twitching, um, more twitching than agitated at this point. Okay. Yeah. Um... There's something else up here, and there's something at the end of the corridor here that I'm, I can't quite make it out, guys. But maybe, maybe we can figure it out what to do. But there's something else here. At this point, I'll uh, climb up and uh, join Tespian and uh, see what he's talking about. Okay. Does everybody want to glow up? Um. I would like to change my form into an owl so I can see in the dark. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, my character can see in the dark as well. Okay, yeah, so you guys, you guys don't have, like, infravision, but you can see further in the light, right? Yeah, uh, exactly, yeah. So, um, there's, there's no, but nobody can see in the dark in this game except for a shadow mancer that can actually see in literal darkness. Nobody else, everybody else, there has to be some light. It's just you can see further into the darkness, right, with the light. Um, so, as you're, um, Phoebe, as you're flying up, um, one of those things comes at you. The flying, fluttery, the flying, black, leathery, rubbery thing. I'd uh, like to use my projectiles to sort of, like, you know, act defensively for her. Okay, nice. So, what you see is, um... A bat-winged monstrosity. It's humanoid in shape, has large claws, um, and a face, uh, a head that has no face. It's like an elongated black head with no face. Um, and it has, it has like kind of a whip-like tail, clawed hands and feet, and it's kind of diving at you, all right? But, um... Arthur and, Arthur and Rick is going to take a shot at it, alright? So, go ahead and shoot. Okay. Okay, the two. Uh, you need a four to hit. So you could spend two karma, or you could take a karma for missing. I'm going to take a karma for missing. Okay. <laughs> so the arrow whizzes by. Okay, am I able to reload and fire again? Not this turn, no, that, that was your action. Okay. Do you want to move up the path, or stay where you're at? I'd like to stay where I'm at. Okay. And then you kind of realize, ooh, this curved path with, like, no ledge, it's just curved, would be really dangerous if one of those things decided to come and to attack you, right? <laughs> on the path. So yeah, you're kind of getting the the point the you know, this is this that's why we were all those people fell to the bottom, right? Cuz these things suddenly dove at them and then they slipped off the path. So yeah, that's not real good. Okay. So <laughs> So uh Thaspian, what do you want to do? I'm going to light another arrow. Mhm. Mm and shoot it at the one that was going towards uh, Dr. The doctor Phoebe. there. Yeah, mm -hmm. Dr. Phoebe. Okay. But still, like, have my argumentative spirit companion there kind of watch my back. Okay. You know. She's like, don't take too long. They're coming to life. Whatever they are. Mm -hmm. They're not human, I'll tell you that. Okay. Um, so. No longer human. Maybe they were human, but they're not anymore. 
Ooh. <laughs> hey, take a karma. <laughs> what? Me? Yep, you. Okay. I gotta give you karma for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're, you're taking a pot shot at it? Yeah. Okay, you got a five. That is a, that is a hit. You hit this thing. Awesome. Okay. Um, now you could try for a crit. If you spend a karma, you'll have a six. You could roll again and try to get another six and do another strike. Uh, I'll wait. Because one strike won't kill it. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, you hit it with the arrow. It it that does deflect it from its course to the owl. So that's good. Um, but now it's coming towards you. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. That's that's all, that's all I can do is turn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Sebastian, what are you doing? Okay, I was on my way uh, next to uh, Tuscan. Uh, so uh, what I can do is, uh, if I can reach him, get ready to uh, whack the uh, thing that he injured. Okay, it's not to him yet, but what you could do is you could hold your attack mm -hmm. and wait until it gets there. Okay. Okay, you want to do that? Okay, I'm going to... Since that's quite a ways up, um, and you came from the bottom, I'm going to have you roll the dreaded don't roll a one trick. <laughs> <laughs> so if you roll anything but a one, you won't slip off the path as you hurry up the path. Okay. You uh, want to still do that? You want to still do that, or you want to pull yeah, it back some? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, cool. Okay. Do I get a boon for the... Uh... For the athletic sting, or is it just a uh, straight road? A boon for the what? Uh, athletics, or uh, whatever it is for the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, you do, actually. Yes, you do get a boon. Okay. So as long as you don't roll two ones, you're golden. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so on. Okay. So since you take the... You, in this game, you take the highest of the rolls. <laughs> you roll the, with a boon. You take the six, not the one. So you're good. You're golden. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, so you I, make I it up. So <laughs> glad you asked about the boon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Like, God. I don't want to be the cause of him falling off the bat. All right, so you, so you get up there. Um, so this thing is coming towards towards you both, okay? And uh, it dive bombs at you, and horrifically, the elongated black head. The skin pulls back from the head like a sheet, right? And you see these, like, kind of prodigious uh, fangs and, and teeth jut out from the head, right? And the, the mouth is open impossibly wide, and it's just dive-bombing you. So you want to hit it. <laughs> so roll to hit. <laughs> okay. You need a four to hit. Nope. Oh, no. two. Okay. You probably don't have enough karma, do you? No, no. no. Okay, you do get a karma because you missed. Okay. So now it is... Um, it's the thing's turn. So it's going to... Uh, I'm going to roll to see who it attacks. One to three is you, Sebastian. Okay, it attacks you. Okay. So, so it comes diving in. It hits. No. Okay. Okay. I'm going to so you take trick. you take a strike, uh, but you do get to do uh, your armor save, right? Okay. So you are a rascal. So you roll two dice, and you have to get a six on either die. Okay. Uh... Uh, instead of the armor save, can I use uh, tricks to uh, avoid the uh, avoid the attack? Yes, you can, because I did not roll a six, so okay. yes, you can trick it. Okay, I'm going to use that. Okay, cool. Yes, yeah, so you, you use the trick, you, it misses you, and zooms back up. Um, unfortunately, the other one kives dive bombing in. And I'm going to roll one to three for you, Sebastian. No, this is on Thaspian. So it attacked. Okay. That is a miss. All right, it rolled a one. 
So that is a miss. Okay, so it they they, they kind they kind of um, the same thing with the head, the, the skin peeling back on the head. They kind of zoom back up into the darkness as they miss, and you can hear the flapping of the leathery wings. Oh, question, Evil DM. Yes. <laughs> um, the talons and the teeth and all that stuff that I saw on these mm -hmm. creatures, does it match the wounds on the things, on the bodies below? As a highly trained physician, you would say yes. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Let's get our tails out of here. If you had to guess, <laughs> that, those were the wounds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay okay so what do you guys want to do okay uh, fighting the teeth to the bottom of the pit again or do we okay. try to go into the uh, tunnel well you do have that first cave there that you're at yeah there, there's something down at the end of the cave but there's other things in there with us and there's that big shield down there that we didn't nobody grabbed that might so, become useful for yeah. the dive bombing. Like, we could, somebody can wear it. Yeah. You know, on their back, just. Can that give us an advantage so that we could shoot around it? Yeah, with our, it, with it might be. Oh, the shield? Uh, hard work to yeah. get it. The shield, yeah, the shield would be great cover. The problem is it's really heavy. Um, so, dragging that up this ramp is really precarious. And it may be more more hassle than it's worth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you could do it. I mean, you, yeah, you're welcome to do it. But. And there's also the tunnel that the uh, shield uh, bony guy came to. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's at the bottom, though. Yeah, it's at the bottom. Yeah, the shield uh, fell at the bottom when the, you, you destroyed the bony guy. So do you um, want to do you want to duck into this cavern? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Walk, walk, walk cautiously and uh, like watch for move, like things waking up more and more. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm using danger sense too, so uh, I'm taking point. I think. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Perfect. Okay. So um, while they're moving into the cavern, do you guys want to catch up <clears throat> and go? the cavern also or hold your positions I'm going to, well I, I want to wait to make sure that everyone gets up into the to the cavern safely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, once everyone is up there safely at, at the entrance of the cabin cavern and I'm going to I'm going to be the brave person and go in after other people go in okay <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Okay, Arthan, what do you want to do? I think my character would like to, you know, just follow suit as to what's happening with uh, with uh, what's happening up up at the top of the cavern. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, you're going to come into the cavern too, right? Mm hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, so, and then uh, the doctor is going to zoom in kind of after Arthur goes in, right? Or do you want to hang out and scout while they're in there? You asking? Yes. Me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to scout too long because I know those things will come back. Right, you hear um, them flying around. Right. Um, I just them. want to to assess what the closest, next closest cavern is. Okay. Um, it's about 20 feet up. Is it difficult to get to? It's on that spiral path. Okay. Um, if we, it, um, meaning is, is it, is it treacherous to so get that? So difficult to... with the bat things, probably yes. Okay. All right, I'm just look, just kind of assessing our escape plan. That's all I'm doing. Um, right. And I will follow into the cavern. Okay. But Thaspian did see side passages off of this cavern, like this cavern that 
the, the right, route that you're going into. into now. There are side. So it looks like you could actually take other passages and hope they go. They lead to where you want to go. Okay. Um, before I go into the cavern, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to do a little owl fee on the floor so I can mark where we've been. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cool. Which right, cavern we went? Which cavern we went into? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so Sebastian, as you're as you're kind of moving in cautiously, um, there's like a dozen of there's like six of these things against the wall, and they start they start to kind of twitch, and they're as you get as you can see them better in the torchlight, they're very human except they are like veiny, like there's all kinds of veins popping out, um, and they seem like zombies, like they're zombified. Um, things uh, kind of leaning against the wall and now they're starting to they're starting to to come more to life and they're starting to make noise um, but they're not you're close to, to, <laughs> you're close enough to the stone to see what um, Thaspian was trying to see on the stone and it is a Handprint, uh, a hand indention. So it looks like a le- like a left hand. If you put your left hand and put it in the indention, it would fit. Huh. Do you want to? Yep. Continue moving forward and try to do that. Yep. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. I'm All right. Pretty, I'm sneaking uh, plus the uh, whatever there is and uh, uh, the zombie retirement home or whatever it is, and uh, I'm sticking my <laughs> hand on that thing. <laughs> okay. Um. So, as you do, they start lurching forward, and they're like, "Stay with us. Be with us." And they're like reaching out. To grab both of you, and the other, you know, the rest of you are just uh, just coming to the cabin. It's like seeing this kind of in horror. Um, and as you put uh, Sebastian, as you put your hand on that thing, um, you hear the sliding of stone. And just above the hand was an almost invisible, imperceptible notch or something that slides aside, and there is a dark recess inside that would just fit your hand that you could reach in. <laughs> okay. Uh, does Danger Sense tell me anything? Um, yes. Danger Sense tells you that you don't think this would be dangerous. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, keeping you my... You think, it's, you think it's safe. Okay, uh, you're fast enough. You can pull your hand out if anything happens. Okay, keeping my left hand on the uh, on the stone, I stick my right hand in the uh, dark mysterious hole. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you feel um, what look what feels like a piece of bone. Um, what do you want to do with it? Uh, take it out. Okay, you pull it out, and you notice that there's some writing on the bone. You want to try to read it now, or get the GTFO out of here? Uh, there's no way else we can. I can go from here. Yeah, it's a, it's a closed tunnel. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I'll, I'll just get back next to the others. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. So you got the bone with the stuff on it. You kind of make it back to the other. As you do, the things are starting to lurch for, and they're saying, "Stay with us. Be with us. Come one. Become one with us." Uh, these things sound like the Duchess of Cambria Tea Party. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys want to stay uh, and fight or tangle with these things, or you just want to try to get the hell get the hell out of here? They're definitely faster than they are. Um, I'm I'm gonna I out, but I'm gonna like wait at the entrance to make sure everyone else gets out. Okay, you got, you kind of have a couple of choices. You could go back out the entrance and take that spiral up, or you could try one of these side passages and see if you get lucky and it leads you somewhere you need to go. 
I'm going to watch and see what they do. Okay. So what does everybody want to do as a group? Okay, what do you guys see? I'm just going to follow Carl. <laughs> He's got the danger sense, right? Stay behind him. <laughs> Sebastian, I'm following you, mate. Come on, bastard. Figure it out. <laughs> okay, I'm racing up to the next uh, opening and uh, just ducking into the uh, into the entries. Not going okay, to the way okay. to just checking okay. what to say. Which is, which is easy for you because you're acrobatic. Okay. All right. So as you guys kind of leave this cavern and go back out towards the spiral corkscrew, um... You kind of see that the zombies are tethered. Um, there is like a some kind of umbilical cord at the back of their heads that goes back to the cavern wall, and there's like there's like holes in the wall, like dimples, and this kind of knotty um, umbilical, fleshy umbilical, like going into the wall, and they can only go so far like a dog on a leash. And it's gonna stay with us. And you just hear them kind of moaning this mantra as you leave the leave the chamber. No, so, no, no offense, certain, but out of infinite possibilities, this was the one you had to pick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so you're making your way up, and um, the things the things die bomb again. Uh, this game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys want to do? They're coming. They're screeching straight at you. You're about halfway up to the next door. I, my character would like to go back in. So he says, uh, "All right, guys, I'm I'm gonna do try a little something here." So he runs back in and he cuts one of the umbilicals. Uh -huh. okay. to, see what, to see what happens. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so, uh, as you... Well, there, there are a few uh, problems to that, first off. They're all waiting at the entrance. So, when you get there, they're going to try to grab you. Okay? They get a grab attack on you. Um, if you want to accept that, uh, you can do that. Uh, and then, then, you, then you can try to cut one of the vehicles and see what happens. Well, but they're can... all kind of clustered there at the at the entrance, like waiting, because you just left. You just left the cavern. Okay. Um, am I able to use a projectile to cut one of the umbilicals? Uh, <laughs> if you get a really lucky shot, yes. Okay, I'll try and do that. Okay, that'll be that would need to be a sick to do that. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you can do it at range, out of range of them grabbing you. Yeah, I don't think anyone else endorses this action, but... Okay, that's a miss, but you could spend two karma to make it a hit. Or yeah. you could take a karma. I'll use the karma. Okay, okay, so you splice through one of these umbilicals, and the thing kind of stumbles uh, actually forward because it was... Um, it was pulling on the umbilical trying to get to you guys, right? Um, and it stumbles forward. And um, I want you to roll anything but a one so it doesn't stumble into you and knock you off the path. Go. Oh. That's a d20. Got to roll a d d6. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, you're good. So you sidestep. It, it, it falls to the bottom with a squelch, a crunch. And the others are just kind of stand there. But yeah, it immediately it immediately seemed to ki kill it, you know, when you cut the umbilical. So it's co they're connected to something. Result? <laughs> Does there seem to be anything coming out of the broken umbilical where it is attached to the wall? Um, They're like fluids, or does it, is it regrowing something? Or anything yeah, like yeah, that? that's a good question. Um, it just kind of whips a around a little bit like a living being, and then kind of sucks back into the wall. Oh, 
Oh, how lovely. <laughs> like it was connected to something that pulled it back in. So, Doctor, what do you make of this, then? It's interesting. Um, I need to do some further analysis. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to try to fly in and use a talon to yank one a, 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 an umbilical off. Oh, off one of the zombies? Okay, uh, the owl wouldn't be strong enough to do that. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, they're very, they're very, they're very strong. Uh, so yeah, the owl would not have enough strength to do that. Yeah, oh, okay. you'd have to, you'd That's have to fine. change it. You'd have to change it to another animal or cut it with a, you know, a weapon. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd like to. Uh, um, forego the analysis <laughs> and. Um, Follow the rest of the party then. Okay, okay. So um, the the things are coming at you. There's three of them this time. Um. So Sebastian, uh, uh, Phoebe, you kind of did your turn with your all your exploration and everything. Um, and Thaspian, what do you want to do? to get to a stable ground as uh, fast as possible. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can make it. Uh, okay, so to get to the next cavern, uh, roll me two dice. You're acrobatic. Don't roll... Uh, don't roll double one. <laughs> it's rigged, I tell you. It's rigged. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> what an amazing uh, feat. You get you get a you get a you get a karma for that. <laughs> See now would have been a good time to have that hero die, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um you slip uh on a wet spot on the uh on the rounded path. So give me a miraculous save to see if you can grab the edge. He slipped on owl poop. <laughs> yep. Okay, and I got uh, six on. Okay, that. okay, okay. You got a six. Yes, yeah, since you were rascal, you get two. You get two dice. You got a six. You made it. So you slip and grab yourself. Um, and you didn't make it, you didn't quite make it, you're about two-thirds up, you kind of slipped and you're hanging on the edge of the path. So you're dangling off the edge, holding on. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's me and that's you, man. I'm going to try to help him out and, like, without compromising myself by using uh, my acrobatics um, to help him get back up. Okay, Next. okay. Um, cool. Uh, yeah, your acrobatics would, would, would work for getting up there, but for pulling him up, that would be a strength. So that okay. would just be one die, okay? okay. So uh, go ahead and roll the two dice for, to run up there and to, to get to him. Okay, you're good. No one. All right. So now the strength, uh, if, as long as you don't roll a one, you can pull them up. Okay, you're good. All right, you pull them up. You're both up safe on the path and pretty close to the door. Um, okay. So the creatures come screeching in. Uh, one's going for you, Sebastian. That is a myth. <laughs> uh, one's going for you, Thaisman. That's a hit. Oh. Uh, you take a strike, make an armor save. Or you are Rascal, right? Yes. Okay, you can do tricks and avoid the strike uh, since I didn't roll a six. So I need, that's 2d6 or one? You don't have to roll anything. You just don't take the strike. Okay. No, yeah, six. basically you're tri you like trick it. You like, you like wait for the last moment and then kind of dodge out of the way. Okay. Or, you know, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a... Um, 
Like you're psyching it out. Like you psych it out. Like you know? a dodge. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a, it's an emergency dodge, right? Um, so it makes rascals uh, very very hardy um, in combat. So uh, there's the last one. So it's going for Doctor Phoebe, and you're the owl form, right? Okay. That's a hit. Uh, actually, no. I'm gonna make uh, that not a hit because I'm gonna make you four to hit while you're flying. You're harder to hit. Um, you're die bombing and stuff, so it does not hit you, but misses. They all three miss, and they kind of flutter back into the darkness. You guys are safe for this for the rest of this round. Okay, so uh, now we're to the next round. So you guys can easily make it to the cave. Sebastian, Thespian, uh, Doctor, uh, do the Doctor can easily because you're flying. But um, Arthur, you're back at the other cave. So. Um, you have you have to get up the path to get to them, uh, or right. you could try to take this one of these side passages and take your luck and see if that leads to them. Yeah, I'd like to um, shout to the rest of the party. It's like, uh, "Oi, we've got uh, we've got a little bit of uh, of uh, something we can do here. Why don't you come come by my way, take a look." <laughs> okay, so you guys have to decide. Do you really want to go back down there? Yeah, honestly, no. <laughs> He's kind of a loner, anyway. <laughs> what what we can do is reach the uh, next door and cover him uh, as he comes up. True. Yeah. Yeah. You could do that. I showed back at him. I don't know what so you found down there, but offer. move up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> As a counter offer. <laughs> stop, stop playing with the dead people. Be with us. Join us. I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, like to take, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to take another projectile shot because they're tethered. There's not much they can, you know, they can't hit me. So I can no, keep no. firing it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you want to, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just gonna keep attacking them. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, we'll just say, we'll just uh, we'll just say uh, you hit it. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna roll for it. Um, you hit it. You untether another one. It kind of just plops down. Lovely. <laughs> Does that earn me a karma? Uh, for untethering it? Uh, sure, yeah, take a karma. Well, yeah, I'll give you a karma. Okay. Okay, so you guys uh, that have reached the other cavern, uh, you see... Um, this cavern is empty. It has the kind of same Swiss cheese passages going off it like the other one. Um, it's about the same size, about 20 feet deep. It has the same weird stone that kind of juts out from the wall with some something on the wall. You assume it's the same handprint thing. But there doesn't seem to be any danger or enemies or anything in this cavern. Just empty. Okay. Uh, we're not we're not under immediate threat from uh, the flying things right now, yeah? As long as you go in the cavern now. Okay. So, uh, before we trigger any other uh, amusement, uh, I turn to Taspia. Uh, thanks for the save, man. And I get the uh, bone I picked up from the uh, other cave. Turn it over, try to uh, read what's on top of it. Okay, okay. As you move forward, uh, you notice it's the same as the other one. It's a left hand, right? But there is something different on the far wall that surrounds it. Uh, no, the I wall mean... is kind of I, w I was going to read the writing on the uh, bone I picked up earlier. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. The, the writing on the bone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
here's what it says and I'm gonna share this do you guys see that did that pop up on roll 20 yes the shortest okay is crimson. so yeah it says the shortest is crimson okay and I'm gonna make that viewable to all players so you can see that if you need to look at that again you can go to the handout tab or the journal tab um, and look at it again to remember it. So the shortest is crimson. And that's what the bone. That's what it says on the bone chip. Okay. Shortest what I wonder. Right. Okay, Thaspian, what do you want to do? I'm going to check for traps before I press the, the button. Or the, okay, put my hand okay out. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead and roll two dice. Okay, six. Nice. Okay, um, the... The stone around where you put your hand on has a bunch of um, irregular holes, like pum, like 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 almost like the stone is like pumice or something. But you're 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 nervous about that. You're you're nervous about these holes, like okay. something could come out. You know, if you go up and put your hand on there. You're worried something could come out of those holes. You don't know. You're not quite sure what. Okay, so. Um, hey, but they're not. They're not pointing towards you, though. They're not like on opposite sides, and they would. You know, arrows could come out. They're hmm. on just on that wall. So, yeah, it's weird. They're not pointing towards you. Necessarily. Do any of them look like they angle down, or are they just straight? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, they're all kind of straight. Okay. Uh, but if you, but if you kind of like went sideways and, and what? Well, sorry, the left hand and touched it, you you would be out of line of fire of those holes. Okay. Uh, hey Sebastian, step off to the side a little as I push the the button. Okay. Um, as you push the button, <clears throat> uh, the door slides open just like before above the hand the dark recess but just in that moment you hear this whipping sound and you see these kind of tendrils <laughs> come out of the holes in the wall and they're kind of whipping around like whipped you have a choice you can Keep your left hand on there and reach in and grab. Try to grab that thing if it's the same as it was before. A bone chip, hopefully. Okay. You don't think it's a trap. You could reach in and grab that, and you might subject yourself to these whipping tendrils, or you could just immediately leap back and not, they don't get you. You're out of range. Reach in and grab whatever's in there. Okay, so you want to take you want to take whatever happens with the tendrils. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay, you feel in there. It's another. It's another. Uh, you should assume a bone chip. Okay. And you pull it out, and indeed, it is a bone chip with some lettering on it. So okay. probably another clue. Um, unfortunately, um, the tendrils uh, come lashing at you, and we'll okay. get to that in a minute. Okay. So, uh, Doctor, what are you doing? Um. I can see this happening to Thespian. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, She's about to get whatever these things are going to do. Okay. They're lashing I'm an, around. I'm in owl form, so I can't speak. Um, no. So, I would like to, um, at the, who is in the entrance? How big is the opening of this cave? Uh, it's about five feet wide. Okay, and who is standing in the entrance? Uh, that would be me. Uh, 
Sebastian, yeah. He's at the entrance with you. Yeah. Okay, and he's carrying a torch? Uh... Who's carrying a torch? Yes. You are. We'll say, okay. we'll say Sebastian is, yeah. Because okay. since since Despian had to use both hands to do what he did, or he could have dropped the torch, that's up to you. Okay. Uh, I'd be cutting it here. Okay, yeah. Okay. I figure you give it to Sebastian because he's reading the ship. Yeah. Okay. So I um, swap back into human form. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I say, wave the torch at the tendrils and see if they react. Yeah, just uh, poke them with the torch. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Sebastian, you, you already had your turn, but you could, Dr. Phoebe, you could grab the torch from him and do it. Okay, I do that. Okay, okay, cool. All right, so uh, you swing the torch uh, into these tendrils, and the you're right. The, the fire stimuli immediately sends them back, flicking back into the holes. Cool. Okay. <laughs> and it seems like Thespian is safe. Pick my hand off the button. Cool. It's still in the hole? <laughs> Oh, he got the he got mm-hmm. the bone chip. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, he got the bone chip. Um, so, uh, Arthur. <laughs> so, what are you doing? Are you moving up? Are you moving up the ramp? I'm or you want to take this? Try to take a side passage, or keep untethering these these uh, zombies, friends. Oh, I'd I'd like to take suit, you know, because it's like. Um... I, I like to run experiments the same way the doctor does, so I'd, I'd yeah. like to sort of like try my hand using uh, a bit of fire against these things now. Um, okay, okay, cool. How they react? Okay, you would actually use your, you would actually use your turn. I was just seeing if you wanted to move because moving it's like D and D. You you get a move action as well as kind of a turn action. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you're just kind of staying in your area then, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, okay, cool. All right, all right. So. Um, the tendrils have moved back into the into the poor stone. Um, you 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 back up to, I assume Sebastian, and you he got the light or no? I'm sorry, the doctor has the light now, and you're checking out the bone ship. And here's what the bone ship said. Can you all see that? No. Mm, not yet. No. Okay. How about now? You yep. must place yellow. Okay. So that appears to be the next clue. You must place yellow. Whatever that means. This would be bad if you're colorblind. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be SOL if you're colorblind. <laughs> okay. So, what now, guys? You you reached the second cave. Earth, stop playing with your with your new friends and come join us. Nearly done. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there is there like a path that goes down and then one that goes up, or like how is that? that goes oh yeah. Up and that's- Right. Um, yeah, yeah. It seems like some of the some of the some of the caverns go, uh, or some of the cavern caves go up and some go down. Okay. Um, I guess I'll light another torch. Um, mm-hmm. that off. And Arth, can you see the light? I'm having a look. Can you see it? No. no. It's it, it must be too wide. You're probably you're about twenty feet up, so it's probably too windy for him to see it. And it's like kind of a circle. It it goes around the edge of the circle. You know what I'm saying? Because it's kind of like a well. So, okay. um, yeah, it, it's the the path is probably too windy for him to see the light. But yeah, he doesn't see it. But yeah, good a good test. I'm going to the light. <laughs> Come to the light. Are then come to the light. The light. 
So, Dr. Phoebe and Sebastian, you guys want to stay here? I'll follow this down and see if I can link up with Arthur and come back with him. Oh, might as well all go. Uh -huh. We could all go. Um, uh, I'll stay and watch and be lookout. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's good idea. Yep. Have the torch there. Turns out that Doctor Phoebe's a coward, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> At least those bat-like things don't seem to be coming in the caverns after you. They just seem to attack you when you're on the uh, the path. Okay, so um, as you, as the two of you are making your way down, um, you see um, kind of a ghostly form. A, a chamber, a chamber, a small little chamber opens up, and a in a ghostly form is like sitting on a stone. And floating in the ghostly form is a skull, where the head is. And it, it turns and looks <clears throat> when it sees you come in. I turn to uh, Tuskian, a uh, friend of yours? <laughs> <laughs> and you said that you can see the skull inside the... Ectoplasm stuff. Uh huh. How did you come to be here? It says. I don't know. We opened a dorm. Some dude named Grim, I think his name was. Yeah, Grim. Yeah, he, he we were in a hallway with all these doors, and one of our friends we were looking for is um, opened it. This is where we ended up. What is this place? A sick, sick joke. Created by a being. An immortal being. Yeah, someone said something about a game, but it doesn't seem like a lot of fun to me so far. No, it's not It's not to us contestants. But this thing is immortal. It's bored. How do you end it up here? It plays with us like rats. Hmm? How did you end up here, anyway? A damn conjurer sent us here. I lost my entire party. I don't know how I'm... I'm still here. But please, I've got... I've got to get out of here. I can't... I've been here... I don't even know how long I've been here. Take me out of here. Okay, I walk up and reach in and grab the skull and pull it out. Okay, when you do, um, the the skull kind of pulls out of the ghost, mm -hmm. and the ghost just kind of the ghost just kind of dissolves, and you just have the skull. Okay, put it in my bag. Okay, okay. cool. Mm -hmm. And both of you get a karma for that. Oh. Awesome! Yay! Mm -hmm. For that encounter. Hi, what's going on? Uh. <laughs> Found a new buddy. <laughs> so as they get as they get closer, um, Arthur, you indeed see the light, and you hear them moving down the, the passage. Uh, some of the zombies kind of like pull off and are like going towards the passage too. How do you mean pull off? As in, they're uh, they were all kind of you were kind of you were kind of the only one they saw. So they're like all reaching towards you, join us. Uh, and then they hear a noise, and so some of them are pulling off towards the other passage. So it's going to be more easily easy to cut the umbilical then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll uh, I'll use a, a flaming uh, attack to take out uh, some of those umbilicals then. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll just say you do it. There, the, uh, you you uh, um, a as a goblin, you can also as your as your racial thing, you can hide. So we'll say that you like hide, you know, and they lose interest in you, and then they hear the noise, and then you just kind of leap out, and, you know, slice it or shoot it, you know, um, with your bow, and you're just picking them off one by one. So that by the time the other group gets there, 
they're all just on the floor, and they, all the umbilicals have been cut and pulled back into the walls. Excellent. Yeah. Result, so, boy. Uh, also, take a karma for that, for freeing those poor souls. Perfect. Hey, I can see the light. <laughs> oh, towards the light. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's right in front of you now. <laughs> I take up the rest of my, uh, what is it, the movement phase to sort of like go out and uh, meet, rejoin the party. Okay. And I inform them that I. I think there's some sort of like weird tentacle monster that's controlling a lot of this place. Tentacle monster. Just what we needed. Tentacles. Tentacle. <laughs> yep. This isn't a Scotty game without tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> Ooze, gore, slime, tentacles. Right, it's gotta have. Gotta have the. <laughs> So, are you quite done playing with your uh, toys yet, Arthur? I don't know. I don't know if the doctor wants to take a look and examine some of these holes where the tentacles is coming in and out. Of. You want to look in the hole? Uh, no. <laughs> come on Doc you can turn any bloody anything of course she didn't come down anyway she's up in the other cavern so waiting for your fools to come back the things that were like stuck on the back of the zombie's head did those retract back inside or were they or, like have they been severed off they've retracted back into the holes Ooh. yeah I wouldn't recommend putting your head up against one of those <laughs> Um, move one of the corpses back in front of it. Just see what okay. happens. Ah! Okay, uh, you kind of see this, like, cilia-like projections start to come out of the, of the hole, like, uh, touching the back of the head, and then they start to grow back into the back of the head. Like fusing back into the severed, and then the thing is, the thing is twitching while it's doing this, like a puppet. Okay, how about uh, we? All right, boys, how about we uh, have a bit of fun here, right? Eh? We we can uh, we can grab this tentacle thing, uh, pin it down, and then cut it. So it doesn't attach to this thing, but we get it pinned so we can give it a, a nice good examine, eh? Sounds good. Yeah, we can do that. Seems to me you've already done that. If you've done severing, there should be several different pieces of tentacle already on the back of these heads. Yeah, but we don't have the uh, whole thing pinned down, do we? I mean, yeah, you would have a little bit of the tentacle on the back, yeah of the heads. Oh, okay. Where it got severed, yeah. Okay, well, um, whilst we've uh, done that, um, you know, severed the connection, as it were, again, uh, to make sure it doesn't grow back and attack us, we can uh, take a closer examination at the rest of the corpses to see what uh, what's all happening and going on there. I'm turning into one of those damn beetles and scurrying down there to them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully Don't that like doesn't... Okay. <laughs> Hopefully so, that won't attract yeah, it's the... Like, oh, look, there's a beetle! Smash it! <laughs> <laughs> Not Ringo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay. I knew that you I, named them. You gotta give me a karma for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, you kind of examine this. Um, it seems like, well, going into the brain, you know, the back of the head into the brain, um, and the, what they were saying is like, you know, join us. Seems to you like there's some kind of hive mind or something 
Like these these things were part of it. Whatever this creature is that they told you, the Obrex Ogid. Uh, say, did the skull uh, speak since we picked it up or anything, or is it just uh, being quiet in uh, Tosfin's backpack? Just being quiet. Alright. As a beetle, if I put, if I get close to a hole, does, do I see this tendrils trying to come out? Uh, you mean like climb, climb against the wall? Mm -hmm. Uh, no. You don't. You don't. You don't see any. You don't sense any movement. Your antennae don't sense any movement. Okay. Um. All right. I'm going to crawl into just the barest opening of one of those holes. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um. So, uh, it's almost like a glue trap. Oh, for heaven's sake. When you crawl in, because the slime, the goo from this thing, you get yourself lodged in this goo. Far in am I? Am I? And then you, you're only a few inches in, but you see uh, something large, like, kind of slithering down the, the chute again towards you. You feel oh, no. it. Oh, no. You feel the vibrations of something large coming down the, the stone chute. What do you want to do? Um. Did we notice the bug like trying to go into it? Oh yeah. Okay. Now here's um. Can I turn? And turn into a snake again, and it will elongate out out of the hole and try to wiggle my way out. Yes, you can, but um, as a conjurer, you're feeling something resisting you. So you're going to have to roll resistance, and I'm going to roll three dice on my resistance. Ah. Because something is actively trying to block your magic. I can only roll one die? No, no, no. You can roll up to three die. So I got a six, okay? So... Oh, I... <laughs> oh no, that wasn't me. I'm sorry. I got a five. Sorry, sorry. I was, I wasn't scrolled down. Uh, I got a five. So you have to equal or beat a five. You can roll one, two, or three dice. And I can't roll a one. And if you roll a one, you have to take spell burn uh, to make it work. I'm in, a, I'm in a form that has only one strike. This could kill right. me, guys. No, it would just turn you back into a human. But yes, it would kill you because you would expand and then not be able to fit into the hole. Right. Yeah. That's so cool. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Oh, no ones! And you equaled my roll. <laughs> Thank you, Dice God! <laughs> the Dice Gods were smiling on you today. They were, you? yes. Alright, so you, you, you change it to a snake and you're able to break free. Okay. You have oh. enough, enough strength to break free free of the goo. Yeah, so that you see the snake flop down on the floor at your feet, guys, <laughs> and, it, and it and it looks and it's like <gasps> if a snake can do that. poke at it with my bow. Uh, I look at the snake and I we got like, a snack. <laughs> that's a, that was a bad idea, Doctor. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That's I another statement. Snake that's sorry. A... Yeah, Doctor, you usually use me for your experiments. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there poking or poking the snake with my bow, like, oh, I'm sorry, doctor, I didn't realize it was you poking. <laughs> roll um, I, I roll out of the way, turn back into Phoebe and and, my, and I point it I point it ask me and I'm, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And I reach in the backpack and I pull the skull out so they can show it to her. <laughs> By the way, whenever I ask him his name, its name, uh, whatever it is. Is that you oh, got that? The skull? Yes. I, I yeah, pulled it out of my you bag. 
this show. Yeah, you never you never asked. Yeah. Yeah, what what the hell was that thing? What are you carrying about that for? I don't know, it was inside uh, of like a ghostly thing. We met him uh, just up here. Seems friendly. Yeah. We met the skull up here, they're like, okay. <laughs> He's so cool. He's my friend. Right. <laughs> uh, your friend? How? I like him. And I put him back in my backpack. So, shall, shall we uh, <laughs> look for a way out, or uh, do you all want to play with the uh, strange zombie tentacle monster somewhere? No, I'd say we go back up the way we came. Yeah, good idea. Back up the way you came? Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so you make it. you make it to the other cavern. Um, you've got the clue from that one. Do you want to continue up the corkscrew or go up the side paths and take your luck there? Go up the corkscrew. Okay, cool. Might okay. Be a safer. Okay, do you want to stay as a group or the, the people who are rascals run ahead of the group and get in the cave and let the others fend for themselves? I guess they could follow us. Yeah, I mean they can make it. They just have to roll. They just have to roll a die and not roll a one. Yeah. <laughs> but, but um, <laughs> which is pretty easy in this game. But um, as you know, Doctor Phoebe can change into something, and you know you could fly or whatever. You would have to walk. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can go up in uh, two groups, set up some covering fire or something at least, just to make sure we don't get attacked by the uh, flying things. Yeah. So, you, so basically, you have two choices. You could, you could safely go up halfway. You might take attack from the flying things, but you don't have to roll any one. You don't have to roll any dice to make it that far, right? You're safe, unless the things attack you and knock you off. But the other choice is you can just try to run up as fast as possible. Then you gotta roll the dice and not get a one. So, which one? Doctor, why don't you turn into something useful, you know, like a dragon and, you know, scorch these things? That's a lovely idea, except that dragons don't exist. They and do in to, my books. I have, I have to turn into something <laughs> real. Whatever. It has, be, it has to be an animal. <laughs> Essentially, like a natural animal. Yeah. Um, I can, however, turn into a bee and fly up there. Yes. Yeah, we'll go buzz off then, right? <laughs> <laughs> there isn't much I can turn into that will be again that will work against these. Things. Right? No, not really. No. Uh, I don't know. Gigantic spider. I don't know. If gigantic spiders existed, I could. They do not. Yeah, I'm no. pretty sure they do. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've seen some very gigantic spiders in my life. <laughs> Big spiders. But yeah, ah. she could she could turn into like a horse, but she can't really turn into something that would fly you up, essentially, yeah. right. or crawl you up. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Okay, so let's just see about in, getting up safely. Turn into a spider and crawl up there, see what's going on. Then you can like do like the cool things of like jumping and using your web and like, swinging and yeah. Wait a minute, these things are bats, aren't they? Yeah. No, I don't. Kind why of. don't you turn into a bat? You know, because you are a bit batty, and uh, <laughs> use a bit of that echolocation to help scope out the area somewhat. I could do that. Would you like a which which bat would you like? Would you like a fruit bat, a vampire bat, a cave vampire bat? Vampire bat. Yeah, we don't need a banana bat or anything like that. No fruit bats. All right. If I get if I if I get peckish, you know, I'll be visiting you. Whatever, Doctor. You say the strangest <laughs> things sometimes. You know that. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go batty. Okay. Okay. Uh, you don't have to roll for it. You can do it. Okay. So, are you flying up to the next cavern, or are you just are you gonna kind of scope it out? Uh, oh, 
puppy. Um, there she is. I'm going to uh, to the cavern. To the cavern? Okay. Ah. Gotcha. Yep. So what do the rest of you want to do? You want to scurry it on up and get to the cavern in one round so you don't get attacked or take the safe and do halfway up um, and possibly get attacked. That's it. Scurry up. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you rascals roll two dice. Um, uh, Arthur, you roll one. Nice. Aspian beams up to the next cave. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, you're all good. Um, so you, you scurry it up, the, no problems, uh, and you see the next cave. Very similar to the other ones you've been in already. Um, the same kind of stone at the back of the cave, so you assume it's the same uh, deal. Uh, and... Um, Yeah, there's nothing in this cave. No creatures, anything, just a note, just a... Definitely going to check your traps before pushing the button. Okay. Uh, as you kind of come into the cavern and you're kind of holding the torch around, um, the, the roof of the cavern really seems cracked and jagged. Yeah, that's going to be Yeah, that's going to be on our heads. And you don't like the look of that. Just the whole length of the cavern, or just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, does this one have the, the side branches off on the inside as well, or...? On or... Um, both, yeah. Both sides. Oh. Looks like it went down and up. Um, what's the difference from distance from the button to the one going up? Oh, the other the other passage going up. Yes. Um, they're on that far wall, so you'd have to go somewhat into the room to get to those side passages. One's pretty close to you. One's a little further away. Well, guys, how about we throw a rock at that roof, get it to tumble down? And then we get our uh, good old doctor here to turn into a cockroach and we don't wait turn to that little button on the wall, eh? And then how do I get the bone back out? Don't know, I can't think of everything. I'm not a freaking uh, scientist, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Right. In fact, do we even need the bones or do we just need what's on them? might need bones. It could be part of a puzzle. Right. You don't know. Oh, I don't know. Right. <laughs> well, turn it, turn, it, turn it into something that you can eat it, whatever, and then when you come, regurgitate it, and then we can look at it. I was thinking something like that. I could maybe... Yeah. Because an owl can regurgitate bones easily. Yeah, but remember, owls don't have uh, left hands. Yes. No, no, but but if I were to turn, if I be, if I were to be human, push, push it's my hand, push the button, get the bone, and then drop the bone, turn into an owl, eat the bone, and fly out. Okay. Do I get a, a, any particular sense of danger from this room or from the button or, uh, or the ceiling? Uh, you're very nervous about this ceiling. You're just not sure. It's dangerous. You're just not sure, quite sure how yet. Any you you feel that any stepping into this cavern is dangerous? Huh. Yeah. I'm not feeling very good about hanging around in here, to be honest. I'm gonna scan around and see if there's any rock that we can throw up at the ceiling. I have an idea. Okay. There are some small stones in the floor. Yeah. I'm gonna pick one up. Okay. Wait! Wait! What? Wait. I was only looking at it. <laughs> what has? Does anyone have any string or thread or anything like that that we could, that I could take, or um, 
that reaches from the cave opening to the back. I know where you can find some tentacles if that's your thing. <laughs> I could talk. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> what are you asking for exactly? I just was thinking if I could fly in and tie the bone to the to uh, to something and you could yank it out for the ceiling fell in. I just have a feeling we need this 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 clue. Look, I'm a slippery fella. How about so I just go in and uh, and grab it for the sake of time? Come on. Right, my character just starts walking towards the. Huh. Okay. Walk towards the wall. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, as you do, the cavern starts to shake and rumble. Um, there's a horrendous ceiling, or a horrendous ceiling, a horrendous noise from the ceiling as the rocks begin cracking. Um, a, a large rock falls from the ceiling towards you. Uh, make a miraculous save. <laughs> Oh, that's not quite it, um, but you could spend a karma and make it. Okay, I'll spend uh, one karma. Okay, so a, a rock slams into the ground next to you. Crikey! <laughs> that was You want to keep going? You know what? Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Um... Makes his way back. Okay. Hey, I have an idea. Uh, As you do, the, su the, the, the cavern is rumbling until you get to a certain point. What and then it kind of settles down. W uh, what if we just uh, get to uh, the place where it stopped uh, shaking and then start drumming on the, uh, on the ground? Rather, why don't we get that... Um, that useless doctor to actually be useful for once and fly over because it it might have just been sensing my rhythmic vibrations or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean she could get there without touching the floor. Yeah. Can't blame me for wanting for just walking in there. I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't say it was your fault. Oh come on, darling, I'm not gonna do be like that, am I? <laughs> I am I I am willing to fly in and I will my owl shape. Okay. I will fly to the back of the cave. When I reach okay. the back of the cave where the handprint is, I will become human again. Uh-huh. And use my left hand, quickly press in the thing and grab the bone as quickly as I can. Okay, okay. Um, so as she as she glides in, um, nothing happens. The cave, the cavern doesn't rumble. She gets to the stone. Um, you land, right, and then turn back into a human shape. Okay, that's when the cavern starts to violently rumble. Mm -hmm. All right, a, some stone falls. Uh, make a miraculous save. <laughs> <laughs> wow wow yeah that's awesome okay so uh, <laughs> you dodge it just in time uh the stone shatters on the floor um but um the no more stone seems to be seems to be coming down uh, okay. the grumbling kind of stops and then so you're going to put your hand on the, your left hand on the okay the same as before this kind of panel open doors uh Rock slides out of the side, uh, the crevice where you can reach in. You feel the bone chip. It has writing on it. Okay. Um, so, look into an owl, follow the bone, and fly out. Okay. All right. Nothing else happens. You got it. Fly out. <laughs> All right. So, clue, clue number three. Are you going to touch that? Yeah. Middle of the five is blue. Okay, so yeah, you find the clue that says the middle of the five is blue. Okay. 
Okay. So five, that tells you something. You've got three clues so far. Curtis is crimson. We must place yellow. And then we'll find this one. Uh, has anyone seen any colored stuff so far? Are the bones colored that we have? That we've gathered? No, they're not. Okay. It's all basically been gray cavern. Okay, I'll take that lack of a response as yes. Oh no, no. All right. Well, I think we need to press on and see what see what all this means. Yeah, I guess we should. Okay, so you can reach those side caverns by. You'd have to step out into the cavern though to do it, or you could go back out onto this corkscrew and go back up, go up, try to go. You could try to go up to the next room in one in this one round before the things react, or you could do the half halfway mark thing. Have to bird poop to mark that we've been here first. Gotcha. Another owl pellet. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. All right. So, do you guys want to run up? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Okay. So everybody roll the die. You rascals roll two. Uh, Gobby roll one, and uh, you can fly up. So you're good. I think uh, Thespian got a call. Okay. Okay, Thespian, go ahead and roll your... Uh, um, you guys are going up the path, so roll your acrobatics. Two dice. I thought I just did. Uh, he did. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, did. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, sorry. Sorry. All right, yeah, you're all good. You're all good. Um, oh, sorry. I was scrolled up. Okay, so you make it to the next cavern. You see a figure standing back over by the stone. It looks like a man. Uh, what does he look like? Is, uh... um, as you kind of jut the torch in, you can see he is indeed not a man. He is in the shape of a man, but he has tendril running up and down his body that actually slither like snakes. Mm, not good. <laughs> not good. He says, welcome to hell. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, hello to, to you too. My fate was stuck here, and yours is going to be too. Turn around right now. Yeah, where to? I mean, if we could get stuck up here, we could get stuck down there. It kind of uh, seems a bit the same to me, to be honest. <laughs> You're not getting this clue. What way? And who are you because anyway? I because I want you to be in hell like I am. And you are? In hell. This is hell. And or as close to as we'll ever get. I am nobody now. I am the guardian. The guardian of uh, this clue? Of this, of this clue. Yeah. Thanks for telling us there's a clue here. Now we can <laughs> kill you and take it. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> Try. Yeah, to be honest, that doesn't sound like a very rewarding career, but don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> You know what's really cool, guys, is that owls eat snakes. Yep. So as he as he's kind of standing there waiting for you, you can see these. He kind of holds his arms out, and these tendrils are like whipping, like whipping around him off his body, like like whips. Oh, they're not snakes. as they kind of writhe and crawl up his body. It seems like his entire body is made of these this mass of tendrils. Uh, impressive. It's no, it's not impressive. <laughs> so you guys go first. Uh, 
Okay. Can someone give me a hand and uh, I'll try to get into a position to uh, gank him. No problem. Okay. I assume that we all uh, try to encircle him yep. from different angles. Or distract him or uh, cause a problem or uh, whatever. Yep. Come on, you're a cop. Do what you do best. <laughs> do oh, know. bloody hell, all right. I mean, you saw... Mugger... What is it, demography or whatever it is? The... Oh, uh, thaumaturgy, yeah. Yeah, thaumaturgy, there you go, thank you. Okay. Um, but I want to make it, like, to where he looks like he's caught on fire because he keeps talking like he's in hell. Oh, so. I see what you're saying, right. Right. Now, um, thaumaturgy... I know it's very, just an illusion, but... Yeah, it's, just, it's been very minor magic. So it won't yeah. actually cause any pain or anything. Um, right, but yeah, the psychological yeah, yeah. factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're trying. I see what you're trying to say. Yeah. Okay. So you want to cat? You want to cast like, like a fire, like fire on him? Yeah. Okay. He says, "I see through your primitive magic." You said it was primitive. I am evolved way beyond you now. Hmm. I am no I am no longer held back by being human or oh, goblin. But you're still stuck here. Yeah. <laughs> so we still have free will and you don't. Haha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Always with the thing is really angry. <laughs> All right, now you piss him off even more. <laughs> okay, so who else? He's got a skin complex too. <laughs> yeah. Who else would like to do something? I want to turn back into a human. Okay. And I say, can anyone throw? I, I, I whisper, can anyone throw fire? Nope. Well, he he tried to do an illusion. Oh, but real fire? Can anyone throw real fire? Uh, not really, no. I'm a bit of a marksman, so yeah, I can throw anything. Ooh, that's true. You could light, a, you could light an arrow. I have a pot of grease. Perhaps if we douse him with the grease and then set him on fire. I don't think he let us uh, lotion him up. <laughs> yeah, the grease would be the grease is like very sticky, so it'd be very it'd be really hard to throw if it was oil. You know, you could shatter it on him or something, but like grease or splash it on him. But grease is like in a pot, like cream. So it's like, yeah, oh. when, yeah, you'd oh. have to lather him up. I'm guessing you probably don't want to do that. <laughs> Care <laughs> for a massage? <laughs> that skin really looks. That skin is. That skin rash really looks angry. Here, let me put the lotion on. <laughs> Free massage. <laughs> free massage is free massage. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just say we put him out of his misery. Uh, Arton, are you with me? All right. So, um, so to gank, he needs somebody to distract the target. That's what I was doing. Yeah. By so the, yeah. So the fire didn't seem to do it. So you would need yeah. some other thing, something else like an attack or something. Well, uh, what? What have I? What's my character got in his inventory then? Um, you can have a melee weapon if you want. Um, um I, I, I don't know. Do, do, does my character have any jerkins like filled with uh, goodies? You know, like uh, like oil or potions and such like that that would be uh, potentially flammable. Um, did you did you did you roll or or pick the stuff from the equipment list? I, I want to say yes, but I didn't. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm asking a superior resource here. Right. Well, well, what we could do, we could do that right now real quick. It will just take a second. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so roll 46. While you guys are doing that, I'm going to use the restroom. Okay, okay, yeah, perfect. Okay. All right. So I get a 5, 3, 1, and a 2, which totals as 11. Okay. So, uh, with a five, you have a backpack. Mm -hmm. 
A three, you have a lantern. Mm -hmm. Uh, With a one, you have a flint and steel. Perfect. And with a four, you have a... uh, You have chalk sticks. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty unique. You, so you can like mark stuff or you know whatever. Uh, okay, so roll roll d4 again or d6 four times again. Okay. And this is special. This is specialty gear. Yep. So I get a six, one, one, and three. Okay. You have manacles. You have a quill, ink, and parchment, which is weird for your character. Uh, you have a poison antidote, and you have exotic spices. <laughs> well, there's oil in the lantern, and we've got flint and steel for lighting it, so yeah, I could easily um, jury rig uh, a kind of uh, explosive material, as it were, but it would destroy my lantern in the process, no doubt. Right. So I'd like to throw the lantern, essentially, at, uh-huh. this, uh, at this beast of a character. Okay, so roll to hit it. You are a marksman, so you get two dice. Mm-hmm. And you need a six to hit, which you did roll. Woo! <laughs> so you hit him. Um, the tentacles, or the, 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 yeah, the tendrils try to knock the thing out of the way, uh, but you ma- manage to, get the, to land it with your, uh, sure, your sure shot eyes. You know, you, get, you, get, you hit the target. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's a hit. Okay, and while he's attracted by that, I'd go straight to uh, gank him. Okay, cool, cool. Go for it. Oh. Okay. Okay, so one one misses, um, and a five also misses because okay. he deflects it with his tendrils. But you can bend a karma and make it a six to hit. I'm using one karma on that. Yep. Okay. And do I roll to uh, confirm the uh, the crit or, or not? You do, yeah. Roll okay. again. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's another hit. Roll again. Okay, I'm going to spend one oh, of no. their karma. Okay, that's another hit. Roll again. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you lucky bastard! I'm going to spend my last karma. Okay, <laughs> that's another hit. Okay. Alright. You did five strikes of damage. Okay. <laughs> Dogger got on my nerves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, uh, while he's distracted by being smashed with this lantern, you come up and how do you destroy this thing? How do you kill it? Uh, I walk up uh, right next to him, take my uh, stick into hands, and knock his head off. <laughs> Great! <laughs> bada bada swing! <laughs> Four! Okay, so his, his head goes bouncing around the cavern. Um, and it's probably a lucky thing it did, too, because as the body falls back, and the palms are kind of open, you see that there's, like, holes in the palms. And these snake-like tentacles with with uh, fangs on the end are slapping around um, as he falls backwards. And and then just this ichor just oozes out of his... It's not even blood. It's some kind of gelatinous um, pink jelly... It just comes oozing out of his neck, and there's not there's no not even any bones or anything. It's just he's all made of this. It's like this shell of tendrils with this ooze in the center. Do the tendrils dissolve, or what happens to the tendril, the, the body? Uh, the body, yeah, it basically dissolves into just like a bubbling, toxic ooze. Who knew he had a creamy feeling? (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay. All right. I, I, I twirl my uh, stick around, trying to look like that was entirely intentional. <laughs> and let's have a look now at Now, that's the... something you won't see happen in D&D, will you? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shall I... He does a slow walk away with the explosions in the background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As the thing pops and bubbles, hisses, you know, it's like, he's just like swinging the stick. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the uh, clue that this guardian was guarding, shall we? Yes. Okay, so we got we to gotta tell you, <laughs> that's being, um, <laughs> Sebastian did a major crit. He, di- he got five strikes on it. <laughs> he kept rolling crits. Look at the uh, look at the rolling log there and look at all the crits and fives he got. He added the the karmas. Fives. He added karmas to the uh, one karma to each five he rolled. And so he, he got boosted it to crit. a six and then rolled again. And then crit, crit, another five crit. boosted it and rolled again. Yeah. So he got five speaking, strikes. Yeah. Speaking of damage. karma, did he not get karma for that kill? Uh, no. No. Oh. Karma's for failures. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, the, the kill is enough. <laughs> the kill is enough <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, the, the the stone is now open. So who wants to do it? Yeah, it opens. Okay, cool. Put the left hand up, same same as before, the slides. Grab the bone chunk. Um, has this on it. <laughs> Blue number four. Do you guys see that? Not yet. Okay. Sorry, sometimes it's in your journal, sometimes it's not. Here we go. Did it come up now? Yes. Orange rings true. <clears throat> okay, so clue number four, orange rings true. So, um... You guys want to take a bio break? I know as an old man, I can use one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Need to change How about it like a I... 10 minute break? 10 minute break? 10 minute break, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop here for, t- for 10 and then we'll, we'll come back in a sec, all right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I, need to, I need to change into my brown pants. <laughs> <laughs> See you in 10. See you in 10. Cool. <laughs> All right, the game uh, broke up for a quick bio break, a 10-minute bio break, and then we came back to adventure hey, in the cavern and figure out what the heck is going on in here, right? <laughs> Enjoy. That was pretty intense. Yeah. Hey. Well, well I guess I-, I could could literally say you were one lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> That was amazing. <laughs> uh, I, I love this exploding day thing. Yeah. That was pretty that was impressive. That was impressive. Oh I love it. <laughs> I love I love that. I love that. Yeah, I think your your the system you've come up with is definitely a winner. <laughs> oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love running it. Yeah, and we haven't had to do any maths. That, 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 that's my favorite part, I think. <laughs> exactly. No maths, no look, no looking at your sheets, no, you know, um, no me look having to look it up anything, you know? It's just, yeah. yeah, perfect system. It the is. reason I look at uh, my sheet is to see what I have in my inventory, and that's Right, exactly, is. exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the biggest, yeah. But the other stuff, yeah. It's just so simple. It's so hard, like, for being a DM all the time, it's like, I get to actually play. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. So I'm, like, trying to remember how to use critical thinking skills. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I know what you mean. Okay, so uh, I guess we're all ready. So um, uh, is it still rolling or you need to restart it? No, it's still rolling, still rolling. Okay, good. All right. So, you've reached the fourth cavern, and you're getting closer and closer to that red light at the top of the cavern. Okay. And 
it's, it's getting the light is more intense from it as you get closer. Okay, are the uh, bat things still swirling mm-hmm. around here? Uh, you hear them, yes. Uh, yeah, when you when you ran up the ramp, essentially, um, you still you still hear them around. And is there a path going up from here, from from inside the cave? Uh, there is. There are caverns that go up. You could take those, or you could take the ramp. Take the cavern. Second. We can just take the cavern up instead yeah. of having to traverse. Want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Because then, yeah, something might be up there, but whatever. How many more caverns are there? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Doc, you know the drill. <laughs> okay, so as you uh, make your way up, um, the cavern opens up into a rather large chamber, um, about thirty feet across. And um, there's kind of, uh, well, first you see like a pool. There's a pool in the chamber, and it feels warmer in here. Like uh, the chills kind of take it off in this cavern, and it's, it's a comfortable temperature. And you also see um, near the cavern, out of another side passage, a woman steps out from a side passage and kind of standing there uh, gaping at you. Um, She's not wearing anything. (laughs) Darling. Okay, that's a new one. Hey, what's your name? (laughs) How you doing? I'm fine. How long have you been here? I don't really know. I don't remember. I reach and pull the skull out. Like, do you know this person? No. No? What does it matter anyway? Well, we're It's just us to... here, us now, right? Gotcha. Come, put your feet in my pool. Rest, relax. And she kind of comes up to the edge of the pool, sticks her dainty feet into the pool. Don't mind if I do, darling. (laughs) It's nice and warm and it's nice and warm and cozy. I grab him. I grab his shoulder and I'm like, "Ah, ah, 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 ah." (laughs) come on. Yeah, yeah, uh, maybe my spider sense is tingling. (laughs) <laughs> Look, if I thought there was a trap then you know I'd, I'd know it <laughs> no you wouldn't uh, doesn't seem to be any kind of trap um, okay. I'm gonna look for bones or any any like clothing or gear <laughs> or anything around the pool or in the pool right 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 so you're kind of you're on the lookout for anything that looks suspicious that she's like really a cannibal monster shark or something um so uh yeah you don't see any cl- any ripped up clothing or bones or anything like that in the cavern okay. that that beetle that i grabbed that's in my uh-huh. pouch i want to take uh-huh. it out and i'm going to throw it into the pool okay does anything happen to it uh she reaches down quickly uh, plunges the, the beetle from the water and pops it into her mouth. Oh. Oh. Are you hungry? It, it, it swallows it with one swallow. Nice. Oh, she just... Oh, oh sorry. Are, are you very hungry? Yes, I am. So, I, I, I have, uh... I can help you if you feed me. Uh, my character is very good at foraging. That's one of his uh, 
skills. So would I be able to hand her some food? I don't want that kind of food. Does it matter if it's the, the flesh that you consume? Does it matter if it's old or does it have to be new? I prefer warm and flowing. She chewed the beetle. Yeah. She no. swallowed it. She's... Okay. Thinking. I can help you. What I can you... help you with this predicament you're in. If you help me. Tell us first how you will help us and we will decide if we want to feed you. I can tell you anything you want to know about this game. Except the solution, of course. What's the point of that? You'll know what to expect. All right. How many clues are there? Five. That's a free one. Yeah, we already figured that. If you want to ask me anything else, you're going to have to pay first. Walk towards the entrance that goes out to the cavern that has a spiral thing. Then just start making noise for like the bat things to come down. Then bring my, my bow. Like try to get one of those bat things that come down so I can kill it and then throw it to her. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Um, one does come down. Okay. So that's one d6 for attack. Three. Oops. Okay, uh, you need a four to hit it. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's landed. So a three hits it. Okay. Um, yeah, you... Okay, yeah, that's a wound. That's a strike. Okay. It screeches. <laughs> Anybody else? Seems like a pretty good it. plan. I, I, I know where you're going with this one, Faspian. <laughs> well, glad you caught on. <laughs> you want to attack it? Arthur, do you want to attack it? Yeah, we'll give it a good old strike. There you go. Shoot it with the bow. Uh, not to kill, just to, uh, knock it out. Gotcha. So, yep. Uh, roll, roll two dice. All right, that's a hit. So it's kind of flailing around. <laughs> but it's still up. It looks like it's getting ready to take off again. Grab the arrow that that I shot into it and pick uh -huh. it up and throw it towards the pool. So oh, I see. There. Okay. Okay. It's, uh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, anybody else want to attack the creature or let it go? Yeah, I'm just going to give it the boot. Okay. Okay. So I'm just uh, trying to uh, knock it out, okay? Okay, cool. Uh, so, is this a gank or is it a normal attack? This can be a gank, yeah. Okay, I'm going to try and gank it then. Okay. I like Gank. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a hit. They're both hits. Okay. So that's two strikes on it. Um. So it's down. Okay. Uh, do you want? Are you? So you're trying to? Are you not trying to kill it? You're just trying to knock it out. Correct. Yes. Okay, I just go so into my boot and straight in the head. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay. So it's down. It's just kind of crumpled on the... Um, okay. On the ledge there. All right, Doctor. Up, how about you turn it into something useful and cut it down to the pool? Help feed my noon mistress. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I turn into a gorilla and pick it up and carry it to the edge of the pool. Okay. Okay. I so, the <laughs> so the woman's eyes. 
the woman's eyes grow large and you see this purple snake like tongue darting in and out and then she disgustingly launches herself on it in this frenzy of bloodlust just sucking the blood out of this thing um and as she does um her skin begins her skin wrinkles and her body sags her eyes turn into this um purple uh color um and her hair goes this long greasy stree gray and she's this ha- she's this hag and she comes up from her meal with this tongue whipping around with blood dripping from it yeah <laughs> thank you so tasty now a deal is a deal how can i help you i think you've done enough <laughs> what, what what do we what more do we need to know other than the solution this is a game that we know already but this is a game for your life I yeah we, we that figured that yeah the one who watches it the plays for your life you will become its slave its minion if you fail so don't fail or you'll Thank be you trapped here forever stuck Thank in these caverns figured that one out too <laughs> the hand the hand is the key hand. the yeah. left hand is the key uh, you mean like we've been doing all the way up here uh, opening things with our left hand yeah I think we I think that we can count that one as figure two yeah yes yeah. but it is the key to the game the puzzle your left hand Think! Think on the clues! It's five fingers? Five, five fingers? Five, yes! Five fingers! Okay. To, uh, He's distracted talking with everybody. I want to go over and push the button. <laughs> gotcha. Do we have to, like, paint our nails or something like that? <laughs> yeah, so, so while everybody blood, else is so keeping no. everybody distracted, <laughs> okay. got some exotic spices here. We could. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so yeah, you put your left hand in, the thing slides <laughs> open, you find the bone chip, and here is the last clue. Did it show to you guys? Not yet. No, not yet. Okay, sorry. All players, here we go. Show to players. The last point of Right. So her, she's she's drank so much blood from this thing that her belly's like distended out and just bloated. She's like a tick that's like Ew. drank its fill of blood and she's just like eh, soaking her uh, soaking her bloated body in the pool. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks. You have a nice day too, Agus. Uh, there's a whole lot. <laughs> more of those things out here if you're wanting more. I mean, there's lots out here. <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> Perhaps later. Perhaps till the next party stumbled in here. <laughs> Someone's enjoying themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, head on up, I guess. All right. Yeah, All right. Just continue up. So. As you head up, uh, you no longer hear the bat-like things flying around. But it, the, there's a landing that kind of levels off at the top. And at the very, just above you, you can see the red light. And you see that it moves like it's watching you. Like it's a big eye 
that's watching your every movement. Um, and you see a stone standing up with a left-hand impression in it. Um, a figure stepped from behind the stone and says, I am the game master. And he's like one of those kind of zombies. And you can see uh, up from where the eye is, this umbilical comes down and is connected to the, to the back of this uh, thing. And it says, I am the game master. Are you ready to play the game and escape? Yeah, I believe we are. Sure. Okay. I don't know, that woman down there, she got even prettier. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'll hedge my bets and I'll, we'll see about winning this game, eh? <laughs> so, the, the, uh, so the tethered thrall says, uh, this is for your lives. You become my lord and master's pawns if you fail this challenge. And so he pulls out a, a little leather sack, um, which looks like a probably human skin. He opens the sack, and there's a semicircular stone that's in front of the left-handed indention. And he begins pulling something out of the bag and putting them on the semicircular stone. And you realize that they are gems of different colors. There's red, yellow, blue, orange, and green. And he puts them out on the semicircular stone. And above the indention of the left hand, there are notches that look like those stones will fit. There's one for the thumb, one for the next finger, next finger, next finger, next finger. And so, yeah. And, okay. the, and the game master says, choose the stone. Where do you put the first stone? And the cavern kind of rumbles. No idea, mate. Okay, so. <laughs> Shortest is crimson. So crimson would be on the pinky finger. Mm -hmm. Yes, you must, must place yellow. Middle of the five is blue, so the blue goes on the middle finger. Yes. Mm -hmm. Orange goes on the ring finger. Mm -hmm. And the green goes on the uh, index finger. Mm -hmm. And this is yellow. Hey, what color is the first stone, eh? Uh, the first one is red on the semicircle. That's the pinky. Pinky. Okay. So who, who wants to place this? Are y'all looking at me? Oh, if I have to. <laughs> of course we're looking at you. <laughs> right. Let me do it. Okay. There the, you go. the game master says, you must hold your hand in the indention when you do this. <laughs> Make your choice. The master awaits. Okay, brainless. I'll bloody do it. Okay, and you're going to put the red in the pinky? Okay, a jolt comes from the stone, throwing back Arthen, um, and uh, you take a strike of damage. Oh. oh. Make a miraculous save. Great idea, guys. Oh, I hit the wrong one. Okay, didn't quite make it. You could spend two dot. You could spend two karma to make it. Yeah, I've only got two karma left, so I'll just I'll just uh, the strike. Fail. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of smoking. It's smoldering. That is oh. green skin. <laughs> Who's next? Let's see. You must please you know. Uh. Yeah, I'm going to go with clue number two and pick up the uh, yellow gem. Okay. And where do you want to place the yellow? What finger? 
Okay, I'm putting that on the thumb. On the thumb? Thumb, yeah. Okay, so there's a spark, and you're thrown back with a wound. Make a miraculous save. Okay. Oh, crap. Nope. Okay. Ugh. All right, take a strike. Okay. Wrong again. The master will have new thralls, I think. Luke, it's obvious that the red one goes on the thumb. Thumb's the shortest, isn't it? Is it? Well, what else is short? Yeah, there, there isn't a slot for that. Who wants to place the next gem? Oh, okay. All right, hand me the green one. I'm human, by the way. And I'm going to put the green one on the pinky. Put on the pinky? In. Yeah. You're sure? Yeah. Okay. All right, you place your left hand in. Place the green one on the pinky. And that is correct. Nothing happens. <laughs> I I look at Arth and I'm like, well, perhaps you are not as dumb as you look. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a bit of a wound to the old ego, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult of both rolling in one. Thank you very much, Doctor. <laughs> you don't know what your doctrine's in, eh? <laughs> One stone has been placed. All right. Rings true. So, ring finger? Sure, let's do the ring finger. Ring finger with what color? Orange. Okay. Who's going to try that? I have my hand already in there, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So... Place the orange, right? Yes. yes. It works. It's okay. thick. All that right. is correct. Um, give me the blue one to do the middle one. Correct, human. That is also correct. And Three of the five have been placed. I, for some reason, I can't see clue four. I don't know why it's uh, when it pops up. Well, the oh, red one's obviously the pinky, in it? Yeah, shortest is crimson. Let me see. What didn't we already try that? Got it. That's it. Yeah, Did we already it show up that, that time. Oh, oh yeah, that time. pinky. It must be the thumb then. Um. So orange rings true. Was number. Four. Yeah, but that that was the ring finger. Pinky yes. was the green. Middle was blue. So we have left is you must place yellow. And the shortest is crimson. Uh, and the, uh, crimson would go on the thumb. I guess. That is correct. That is correct. Well, then that leaves only one, right. this one. Right, right. So the cavern kind of shudders. <laughs> and the game master kind of steps back. You have completed the puzzle. The master shall have no th new thralls today. Congratulations. Doesn't feel like a whole bunch of a reward, though, does it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be a game without a reward. Oh, now you're talking. <laughs> so my master shall bestow you a reward. Oh dear. I hope this is a good one. <laughs> You get to be his pet. No. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Okay. So, uh, Lisa, uh. roll me a uh, roll me a d twenty. Oh no. Okay.
Okay, 17. 17. Okay. Um, you are gifted with um, the bracelet of grappling. So you can shoot you can shoot a mystic tether from the bracelet once a day and it will last for a scene. So like basically essentially you're like a like a mystic like a magic spider man, right? You can shoot like a tether, it'll hold, it's a strong tether. You can climb up it, pull you up. What okay. anything like that. Cool. Okay. So Arthur, roll me a D twenty. I uh, got scared. Okay. Um, you have uh, um, goggles of dark sight. You can see in the dark, even in the absence of all light. Woo! Wow. Something That's I could crazy. already do. <laughs> <laughs> you could see further in light, lighted darkness. You couldn't see in absolute darkness, right? Oh, well. Yeah, yeah, so it's a little better than what you can do, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sebastian, Sebastian, roll a d20 for me. Okay. Twelve. Okay. So you have a armband... Um, of uh, fire ward, you can uh, you have a boon to resist fire. Ooh, nice. That's sweet. Yeah, very, very, very smoking. Yeah, smoking. <laughs> 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 okay, that's being roll me a roll me a d twenty. All right, twenty. Oh, bam. Okay, you have. A rod of life giving. You can heal three strikes uh, total a day to any allies uh, near you with a with a uh, with an action. So you can heal up to three strikes total a day to allies in near range for an action. Wow, that's kick ass. Yes. Good roll. <laughs> we, we can trade these items, right? With each other. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. No, you're not getting mine. <laughs> <laughs> as a as a healer, I'm interested in the rod. If you're interested in having the magic tether. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, they're both. I mean, they're both kick ass. Yeah, the tethers. Yeah, that's great. Because uh, yeah, because you could change it to an animal, so it wouldn't be as necessarily as important to you as someone who can't. <laughs> you know. Exactly. Right. right. But then it gives like that whole Spider-Man motif with the acrobatics. Exactly. So, yeah. It's perfect. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I will trade you the tether for the rod. Okay. <laughs> okay. So as the game master gives you these objects, um, the eye glows brighter red and these tendrils drop and they're kind of swirling around you like a mop. Right. And then... Uh, the world just goes black. Um, you lose feeling in your body. And this is where the game ends. Ice. <laughs> this was good. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. So, so next time is totally a blank slate. <laughs> Whoever's picking up the game next time, you got a totally blank slate. <laughs> where these where these guys are going. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> That was brilliant, yeah. Yeah, this was good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that what was great. Is, well, you said it's a bracelet? Uh, it, it's a, it's a, like a little rod. No, for her. The, oh, the yeah, movie, hers is like yeah. a bracelet, yeah, yeah. Okay. Almost like a web bracelet. <laughs> 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 you gotta go, you gotta go, when you... <laughs> this, this is a rod of healing, is that what you called it? Yeah. Yeah. Rod of life giving. Yeah, rod of life giving. Yeah, you can heal life three strikes uh, near range once per day. Mm -hmm. That's going to come in handy. 
three strikes. All right, guys, kick ass! You guys did great. Uh, what a what a fun game. Um, <laughs> and I, I I really I really wanted to go weird with this game because I wanted to show you what the system can do. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, this has traditional D and D elements and that kind of thing, but I wanted to go on the weirder end of that so that the flavor really came through. What you can do with the flavor of this game is really where this game shines, right? It's not the rules. It's not all these different rules and 50 million rules. It's that you can flavor. It's so easy to flavor anything you want to do with these rules. Yeah. And make it work. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing how the game went, uh, he, how it was actually run. Um, we ran this online, obviously, so using Roll20. And uh, as you can see, it's really a breeze to run. So easy. You know, I was introducing rules as we were going. You don't have to sit down and explain all these rules. You can just kind of do it as you go. And uh, everybody had a great time in this just really weird, bizarre situation uh, that was the game. The game within the game. <laughs> right? So I hope you all enjoyed that example. And uh, stay tuned for more easy d6 uh, videos as well as uh, more easy d6 materials coming out and make sure to join the discord and talk with uh, other easy d6ers about the game <laughs>